All right, we'll give folks just a couple minutes to join. All right. I'm gonna jump right in. Welcome everyone to the Crystal Ray Network College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Each will have six minutes to share more about their institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Chelsea and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. <clears throat> your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions at any time. This is one of many sessions happening both this evening and on October 22nd, so be sure to check the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash crystal ray. All right, and now I'm going to turn it over to our first presenter, and that is Seattle University. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Good evening and welcome to Seattle University. My name is Tina Castillo, she, her, and I have a brief presentation about Seattle U uh, prepared for you all. So as our name suggests, we are located in the beautiful Pacific Northwest in Seattle, Washington. Um, we are a private Catholic Jesuit institution and we are a mission driven institution, which is guided by those Jesuit values of um, Magi, of universal holistic education, of social justice, um, and more. So you see that reflected here in that we are dedicated to educating the whole person, to professional formation, and to empowering leaders for a just and humane world. So we're one of 27 Jesuit colleges in the U.S. We are an undergraduate serving institution. That's the majority of our students on campus. And like I said, we're located in Seattle, specifically in the Capitol Hill neighborhood of Seattle, it's about a 15 to 20 minute walk to the downtown area or about a five minute drive. And our campus is a designated um, wildlife backyard sanctuary. So we, while we are located in the city, we do offer an amazing, welcoming, safe and fun um, campus for our students to learn and grow. So we do offer over 60 academic undergraduate majors to choose from. Some popular majors at SU are nursing, which is the top nursing uh, program in Washington State and in the top 10% of programs nationally. We also offer computer science, engineering, biology, chemistry, pre-med, and other pre-healthcare related programs through our College of Science and Engineering criminal justice, psychology, education, history, sociology, political science, art, theater, art within our College of Arts and Sciences. And then finally, our Business and Economics College has our top ranked business finance program, as well as our business analytics. And so professional formation is one of our values and within our mission. So we prepare our students to um, with life after college by getting them connected with those professional internship and career opportunities while they're in school at SU. We're in the middle of the city, so we do have access to those major companies in tech, in aerospace, in the environment, in arts, music, and more to be able to really connect them with our students. We have an alumni network of over 86,000 alumni in over 90 different countries. Um, so we really curate um, and bring together those opportunities to our students. We do offer direct admission, which is really advantageous to students looking to go into some popular high impacted programs like many of the STEM programs. Uh, and then for students who are undecided, we offer pre-major studies program um, where students can get connected one-on-one -on -one with an academic advisor to help them choose um, and select a major while also um, taking other courses that satisfy our core curriculum and then ultimately declaring and choosing a major Major. We do offer an honors program on our campus. It does require a separate ap application, but students who have a 3.5 GPA or higher are invited to apply to the honors program. And all of our students get, do get connected with an academic advisor, and all students will take courses to satisfy our core curriculum, which again are um, really grounded in those Jesuit values, our classes that um, have service learning, um, interdisciplinary focus, liberal arts focus, um, ethics, philosophy, theology, and more. 
I'll kind of skip through these in the interest of time. We do offer over 150 student clubs to be involved with, um, whether that's student government, whether that's through athletics, through faith-based clubs, multicultural clubs, um, service learning clubs, social justice clubs, and more. Um, so lots of ways to have fun um, while being a student at SU. We do require students to live on campus their first two years. And so all of our residence halls have RA advisors who really help create and build community. Um, and fun in the residence halls. Um, but of course, we're located in Seattle. So there's tons of other fun stuff to do. And we partner with Seattle businesses to be able to offer discounted tickets or anything um, like that. We have Seattle um, University Day at the Mariners, um, at the Sounders game, the Storm game, and more. So we are located on the Common App, the Common Application. Um, you can submit your application now if you're a current high school senior. Um, we will evaluate, of course, your coursework, particularly as it relates to your intended major. So that includes those major prerequisites you see there. But we evaluate your grade trend. Our average admitted student GPA is about a 3.6, but it varies anywhere between a 3.4 to a 3.8. We are test optional. Um, and then in the Common App, you'll also submit your leadership and other community service and extracurricular activities. We do have a short essay question and we require two letters of recommendation as well. We have two deadlines. Early action is November 15th. It's a non-binding deadline. And then our regular deadline is January 15th. So be sure to apply by the deadlines to um, assure you'll be reviewed for admission as well as our scholarships, because as a private institution, um, while we do um, tend to cost a little bit more, you see our annual tuition is about $50,000. That's whether you're an in-state or out-of-state, um, it's the same for everyone. Um, we also award um, various admission scholarships. Most of them are based on academic merit. However, we do have our Sullivan Leadership Award, um, which is competitive, but that does offer um, full tuition, full room and board. And we have other scholarships too for students who attend other um, Catholic high schools. Um, and so be sure to check out our website for additional scholarship opportunities. And of course, apply for financial aid through the FAFSA or WAFSA application to see what other income-based aid you may qualify for. If you are in the area and able to come out to campus on October 29th, we are hosting our fall preview day on campus for prospective students and their families, and we offer campus tours twice a day. So definitely sign up for one of those on our website. And if you do have any questions, we can get in contact with you um, by phone or email. So definitely reach out. So thank you all so much and go Red Hot. Awesome, thank you. All righty, next up is Whitman College. All right, thank you for having me. Um, hello everyone, uh, I apologize for not having slides, I uh, had technical issue. So you'll just have my face with you here today. Uh, my name is Chris Duncan. I use he, him pronouns. I'm an admission officer here at Whitman College. For those of you that are unfamiliar, Whitman College is a small private liberal arts school um, in Washington, uh, Walla Walla, Washington, which is in the southeast corner of the state. So we're in a pretty unique location in Washington. And unlike Seattle, it's the dry side of the state. So to our west, we have the Columbia Valley, which is a high desert plateau. And then to our east, we have the Blue Mountains. So it's directly in our backyard, which is a great resource that we have here. By small, I mean that we are about 1,500 students. Uh, so we are known for academic excellence, and we challenge our students to engage in a rigorous curriculum and engaging community where you're going to collaborate rather than compete. So that 1,500 student mark is really important to us. Our average class size is about 17, but as you graduate to the 200 and 300 level classes, that drops down to about 10 to 15 students. So these classes are generally discussion-based. And what I love about that is that it offers unparalleled opportunity. Uh, you won't have to compete with one another to voice your opinion or schedule a visit in your professor's office hours or to partake in their research. And this is really a cornerstone of the, the whole foundation of Whitman College. Academically, excuse me, academically, we have over 60 majors and 35 minors. 
but that doesn't even include the option to create your own major. I have a coworker here in this office who recently graduated from Whitman College, and she was interested in biology and psychology. And instead of double majoring, which is also an option, she decided to make her own major, which was neurobiology. And so that was a totally unique offering, completely unique to her. Um, well, there are many, many great departments here at Whitman College for the sake of this limited presentation. Um, I'll just kind of highlight our environmental studies department, which is something that we're very well known for and something I'm particularly passionate about. We don't view environmental studies as one major, really. We uh, instead, we kind of see how it can apply to so many different departments. So we have 11 combined majors that take students who are passionate about sustainability and environment into every academic building. So this includes environmental humanities, environmental studies, anthropology, environmental studies, art, biology, chemistry, economics, geology, history, physics, politics, and sociology. So we strive uh, here at Whitman College to be a leader in climate science and environmental politics. And many students are drawn to Whitman because of this and the access to the outdoors that our location provides. So not only are they passionate about the outdoors in the classroom, but also um, recreationally with their extracurriculars. Um, so Whitman College education, it doesn't end with the classroom. Uh, we encourage all students to engage in the community, become club leaders, explore the beautiful Pacific Northwest, and pursue your passions and develop your skills in whatever way you choose. One way we promote that type of experiential learning is through our career counselors who are assigned to every single student as an academic advisor would be, which we have as well. But these career counselors are going to help each student land internships which we provide um, a $3,000 stipend to for every internship that's renewable up to three times. So this is just kind of ways that we really promote this experiential learning that we really believe in a holistic approach. Whitman College really is a place kind of like no other. And so from the moment that you arrive, you're going to belong to a community that really challenges you, um, but also supports you. And you're going to learn from some of the most accomplished and accessible faculty on the, one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. We are also a common app school. Um, so we view as Seattle U, we have a very holistic reviewing process. Um, and we are also about 90% of our students do receive financial aid. So we award merit-based scholarships up to 25,000. And then about 80% of our financial aid does go into the need-based category. And so for us, that typically looks like uh, the CSS and the FAFSA profile. But if you need more information on either of those, you can feel free to reach out to me directly. My email is duncanc at whitman.edu. I wish I had a QR code for you to look at here with the with our slide deck. Unfortunately, I do not. But duncanc, again, at whitman.edu. So you can just reach out to me directly. Thank you. Thank you so much. All righty, next up is Gonzaga University. Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here. Um, I am Carrie Weeks and I'm Associate Director of Admission at Gonzaga and I'm happy to share a little bit of information about Gonzaga with you. Uh, Gonzaga is a liberal arts university that is in the Catholic and Jesuit tradition. We're located in Spokane, Washington, which is the east side of Washington State. And Jesuit education is really known throughout the world for providing holistic development of mind, body, and spirit. And so at Gonzaga, that's what we focus on. It's cura personalis, or the Latin term for the care for the whole person. Gonzaga is a medium-sized university, so just around 5,000 undergraduate students that come from almost all 50 states and about 40 different countries, as well as a number of tribal nations. And uh, we have about 41% of our students who identify as being Catholic, and then others are other Christian denominations, as well as other religions, and some have no particular religious background. About 32% of our students in the first year class identified as being Black, Indigenous, or students of color. And um, Gonzaga also has a um, top 20% national ranking with US News and World Report. And we really educate students from many different faiths and backgrounds for lives of leadership and service for the common good. There's also a strong emphasis on interdisciplinary and learning by doing at GU. So that includes things like internships and field experiences and research. 
Uh, we have an average class size of 23 and a student to faculty ratio of 11 to 1. So students really get to know their faculty. The faculty teach courses as well as labs. So we're able to offer that kind of personal advising and attention. And we're actually ranked uh, number 12 nationally for best undergraduate teaching. We have very happy students with 93% of our students returning for their sophomore year and uh, successful graduates with 96% uh, at the point of six months after graduation saying that they are working, they're in graduate school, or they're doing full-time service programs. We offer over 75 different academic programs and majors through the five colleges of the College of Arts and Sciences, the School of Business Administration, the School of Education, School of Engineering and Applied Science, and the School of Nursing and Human Physiology. And 63% of our students do study abroad, including in places like our second campus in Florence, Italy, as well as about 30 other countries. We're located just across the Spokane River from the downtown area. So that's about a 10 to 15 minute walk into downtown Spokane. And that walk is on the Centennial Trail, a 37 mile paved bike trail that runs right along the south side of our campus. Spokane's a city of about 225,000 people within the city limits and about 770,000 when you open it up into the metro area. We have a really great combination of urban as well as outdoor activities and amenities. Uh, for example, our GU Outdoors Club will take students on skiing trips and many other outdoor adventures throughout the year. And students have great access to internships, shopping, uh, restaurants, movie theaters, all of that. Again, just walking distance to downtown. Or they also have free access through the city bus pass. Um, they just use their GU ID. About 82% of our students come from over 200 miles away. And while Gonzaga is a strong academic school, we also do have a lot of support and resources behind us and to help students grow and share their talents as well. So we offer about 140 different clubs and organizations. We have strong residence hall communities where our first and second year students are required to live. And we also have speakers and dances and festivals and service opportunities, very active intramural club and division one athletics, as well as many optional retreats and spiritual options. We provide a lot of resources for students through many offices, but I'll just kind of highlight a couple of them, such as our Unity Multicultural Education Center and our Lincoln LGBTQ Plus Resource Center. And they are a home away from home for students, as well as excellent places where students can share their leadership gifts. We have over 800 student leadership positions on campus. We do use the common application for admission and to determine merit scholarships. And December 1 is our deadline. That's our only deadline. Students interested in nursing as well as engineering do have to apply directly into those programs. So they need to list that on the application and be admitted into those majors. We are test optional for admission to all majors, including the honors program and scholarships. So you can choose whether or not you want to submit your test score. And if you don't submit a test score, we will put more emphasis on your curriculum, your GPA and your writing in the application. Our middle 50% of the students um, were between, for first year class, were between a 3.6 and a 3.9 for a GPA. And that's an unweighted GPA. December 1st is also the priority award deadline for the FAFSA, so that you can access any federal, state, or Gonzaga need-based aid. And if a student is unable to file a FAFSA, then you can file a WASFA in Washington State or a needs-based analysis form that we have on our website so that you can access state and Gonzaga aid. 98% of our admitted students do receive a merit scholarship, and merit scholarships are automatically earned when students apply for admission. So I hope that this has helped give you a taste of the Gonzaga experience, and I welcome your questions later. Go Zags. Thank you so much. Next up is the University of Portland. All right, everybody. Thank you all for having me. My name is Cassia Sparza. I use she, her, a, a pronoun. I am a senior assistant director at the University of Portland, um, and I will be sharing some information about the school with you today. 
uh, and, and hopefully get some questions from, from you a little later on also. So like our name suggests, we are located in the city of Portland, Oregon, uh, and we are about 25 minutes north of the downtown area. So not terribly far, but not in the middle of, of the bustling downtown area. Sometimes that is uh, a preference for students. I know for me, when I was a student at University of Portland, I really loved the location in terms of having great access to the city when I was ready for it, right? So campus location really tends to be um, our students home away from home. This is where you live study focus and then once you are ready to take advantage of all the things that the city of Portland has to offer it will be there waiting for you um, much like many of our other um, schools here today we are in the Pacific Northwest and love taking advantage of that so about 90 minutes east you will be um, at Mount Hood taking advantage of all the snow sport opportunities that you can imagine um, head about 90 minutes west in the opposite direction and you are now at the Oregon coast uh, which just gives a little bit of a different feel for students so we have an awesome program program on campus called the Outdoor Pursuits Program, and they put together different opportunities for students to take advantage of all the things that the Pacific Northwest has to offer with regard to outdoor recreation. Uh, in terms of giving our students the opportunity to um, really develop professionally um, and take advantage of internships and jobs and research, we are so fortunate to uh, be located close to companies like Nike, Adidas, Intel, Under Armour, Columbia Sportswear, accounting firms, engineering firms, amazing hospital systems where all of our students have a wonderful opportunity to not only learn in the classroom but take what they are learning in the classroom and take that with them into the real world also. We are a little bit of a smaller school. We're currently at about 3,700 students for our undergraduate population, and that is primarily the, primarily the population that we serve. Uh, we have a couple hundred uh, graduate students at any given time every year, so undergraduate students is really where we put our focus. Uh, yes, small class sizes. Yes, low to student faculty ratio. I believe that our um, approach to education, which is very discussion-based, is very much focused on a student's engagement, works really Really well for students who already know that they learned that way in high school or know that they need that little bit of extra access to their teachers before or after class or school. That would be an opportunity for you to take advantage of office hours at University of Portland to really engage with your professors, which you will always be taught by professors in the classroom, never a TA or a graduate student. Um, also with our site comes the ability to build community quickly. Uh, we are an incredibly residential school, meaning that most of our students live on or near campus. Uh, and so with that comes the opportunity opportunity to to find your family away from family, but then also the excitement of still being a population that is big enough um, for you to meet someone new every single day. Uh, typical class size is around 30 students, never getting too much larger than that. An example of a large class size at UP would range between 55 to 65 students, but you will never find yourself in a lecture hall situation of 200 or 300 students um, overall. A little bit about our academic programs. We divide up our majors into five different schools. So we have the College of Arts and Sciences. We're thinking all of our folks involved in the natural sciences, social sciences, and humanities. And then we have four professional programs with the School of Business, the School of Engineering, the School of Education, and the School of Nursing and Health Innovation. Um, we are also direct entry for um, those professional schools. So particularly with programs like nursing and engineering, that can be quite appealing for students. Uh, we do offer a core curriculum, um, which is a set of classes that is required of all students, regardless of their major for you to take. Um, and this is where we are allowed and, and um, hope to deliver our liberal arts curriculum. So we are categorized as a liberal arts teaching university. Um, that also comes from our background of being a Catholic institution um, founded by the Congregation of Holy Cross. Um, so our goal with the liberal arts program is to help you find your major, right? Help you find the program that you are going to fall in love with and pursue during your four years at UP, but we hope to have you engage in other subject areas. Uh, we believe that the value of a liberal arts education is going to prepare you for an ever-changing world once you leave University of Portland. Um, so our goal is to educate the head, the hands, and the heart of all of our students, right? Giving you that education and the opportunities to put that education into practice, and then ultimately helping you understand that as you leave UP, the decisions you make impact communities around you, and how can we um, work on, on what we do to make those decisions, um, thinking of other folks uh, as well. Um, ability to study abroad, ability to double major, pick up a minor, um, several different opportunities 
opportunities to be involved again in, in academics that maybe aren't your major, but you want to pursue them as extracurricular activities. So I'm thinking our performing arts program um, or something within um, the honors programs or an academic club, but you don't have to be that major to participate in that club as well. Campus life, we are a very residential school, as I mentioned. We require our students to live on campus for two years. Beyond that, you can choose to continue in the traditional dorms, maybe move off campus, um, or be in our student apartment housing eligible for juniors and seniors. Most of our students are not from the state of Oregon. About 75% are from out of state. About 30% uh, identify as Catholic. This year, about 50% identified as students of color and about 37% of our students identify as first gen. So several opportunities um, to take advantage of resources on campus. A little bit about the application, November 15th, rolling admissions were test optional this year. These are the items that we need from you. Merit scholarship, FAFSA, and outside scholarships are all wonderful for UP. And that is me, if you have any questions. Thank you all so much and hope to get some questions from you. Wonderful, thank you. Next up is California Lutheran University. Thank you for having us, for being here with us, and kind of bearing through these presentations. You know, you're getting a lot of information thrown at you. My name is Diana Hernandez. I'm the assistant director with the graduate admission at California Lutheran University. I'm also the coordinator of junior support. My pronouns are she, hers, a, yeah. We'll go ahead and just jump right on in. So California Lutheran University, we are located in Thousand Oaks, California, right between Santa Barbara and Los Angeles. As we keep going here, there we go. And a little bit of how we come by the numbers. So we have just over 2,500 undergraduate students with an average class size of 15 and a 14 to 1 faculty and student ratio. So this is definitely similar to a lot of my colleagues' institutions, a place where you can definitely get to know your professors and where your professors will get to know you. I'm a proud Cal Lutheran alum. My largest class was 30, my smallest class was five, my roommate had a class of two students. And so this is definitely a space where professors will notice if you're in class or not, they'll notice if you're struggling, and more importantly, definitely reach out to you and ask if you need any support or how they can best support you to make sure that you're getting the grades that you want to in these different classes. We'll see here a couple different numbers for our students. So 28% of our students are first generation of family Christian college. Cal Lutheran is a minority majority school, meaning majority of our students are students of color, and we're proud to be a Hispanic serving institution as of 2000. As we keep going here, we'll see a list of our, some of our majors. So we have 41 majors, 43 minors. One of the great things about Cal Lutheran is we have no impacted majors. So in a way, when you're getting admission into Cal Lutheran, you're getting admission into all of our majors. You'll see here what our popular majors are. But again, you do have the opportunity to explore these different majors. It's actually really common and want you as you're taking a philosophy course, a psychology course, a sociology course, add it on as a double major or a minor, or maybe look into the different emphasis areas that you're considering. Colorton has an amazing program which is our Ford Affinity UNC where we will guarantee your graduation in four years. One of my favorite things about that is that it does cover a double major. So going back to what I was just mentioning, getting the chance to explore these different areas and then add on add it on as a as a major and then knowing that you're still going to graduate in four years. Is a nice little safety net that our students have. In addition, if you are interested in business, for, for example, we do have an amazing MBA program here. And there is a program that can definitely fast track you in your bachelor's. You can come to campus with your bachelor's degree and your master's degree in five years. Really awesome opportunity for anybody interested. The college is much more than just academics. Um, it also has a lot to do with the community that you're joining. And so at Calerton, we have over 100 different clubs and organizations ranging from academic to cultural, social justice, hobbies. If you like to go hiking, we have a hiking club. So there's lots of really awesome opportunities for you to not only explore the area near you, but also connect with other students that have very similar interests as you do. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite events are listed on here. I'll mention Let It Snow. Let It Snow is almost right between or right before finals. Um, and they bring out 40 tons of fake snow to campus, which in Southern California, we don't really get a whole lot. And so it's a really nice perk for students um, to just do something fun with some Mrs. Crab and then to make an appearance. And then one of the clubs I do want to highlight um, is we do have, um, I'm so sorry, like I mentioned, different activity clubs as well. And so that's available for students, like the hiking club where you can take hikes directly from campus. Now, another really great way to be involved is through our athletics. So we have 22 NCAA Division III women's lacrosse is the newest addition to our family of sports really amazing facilities 
students. So there is a really nice balance between being a student and being an athlete as a D3 institution. There's really awesome facilities. So even if you don't commit to a college level team, you have the opportunity to still use these different facilities. Pat Lutheran does have a fun fact about us. We do have the LA Rams and Angel City, which is the professional women's soccer team on our campus. And they call Cal Lutheran their home. And so they're able to provide different internships for our students, ranging from sports management to sports psychology to business to marketing, PR, um, exercise science, really anything along those lines. You're able to work directly with a professional level team, as well as if you want to continue on and be a pro athlete, you have two teams here that can definitely help point you in the right direction and definitely help mentor and support. Now, in terms of living on campus, the Lutheran is ranked as has having some of the nicest residence homes in California. There is no communal restroom that you go down the hall and share with everyone on your floor, which I loved as a student. We do have 15 co-ed residence halls. We do have AC and heating in all of our residence halls, guaranteed housing and parking all four years, free parking, free laundry for students. Now, in terms of dining on campus, your will features the Dear Ullman Commons. It is an all-you-care-to-eat buffet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We also have The Habit, which is like burgers and salads, Starbucks and Jamba Juice, and students can use the meal plan at any one of these. In terms of what we'll require for admission, we are Common App exclusive, so that is the only way to apply for admission as an incoming first year student. We'll require official high school transcripts and a letter of recommendation to be from a teacher or counselor. Cal Lutheran has two deadlines. The first is coming up in a little bit under a month now, which is November 15th and then January 15th. Neither of these two deadlines are um, binding, so you'll still have until May 1st to decide if you want to come to Cal Lutheran or not, but either of these two deadlines, you will automatically be considered for academic scholarship. That can go up to $32,500. We also do have the presidential scholarship that can go up to full tuition, and it is important that if you want to be considered for the scholarship that you do apply by November 15th. In addition to that, we do have um, visual performing arts scholarships that can also go up to full tuition. So that has a separate application, separate audition, portfolio submission process. The application is live. And everything that you need to know in order to prepare for that audition or portfolio submission is online. So you can start taking a look at that. And this is the contact information for our general admissions line. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. In addition to that, I'll be putting my contact information in the chat and I'll be happy to help. Thanks so much. Awesome, thank you. And last is Oglethorpe University. All right, give me one second. <clears throat> All right, good evening, everyone. Um, so this is Oglethorpe. Unlike everyone else in this chat, we are located on the East Coast. So we are in Atlanta, Georgia. So we are a small school. We have around 1500 students, um, you know, like some of these other schools here, a little bit smaller um, opportunities, which means our average class size is around 17 or so. Um, <clears throat> we also have the opportunities that the big city provides. So, uh, you know, with, whether that's internships, whether that's jobs after you graduate, there's a lot of great stuff happening in the city of Atlanta. So, you, you know, we're not too far uh, away in terms of going to a Falcons game or whatever it may be to be able to access like I said, what the city has to offer here in Atlanta. So a little bit um, more about Oglethorpe. So we are an applied liberal arts and science school, just so you guys get an idea of what our most popular majors are, um, biology, engineering, communications, business, and theater. Um, we do have one-on-one -on -one advising experience, which 40% of our students are first-generation college students. So we really try to work with our students um, in terms of helping them out throughout this advising experience um, while they're here at Oglethorpe. Um, like I, I talked a little bit about the small class sizes, our, our average or our student to uh, faculty to student ratio, that's the word I'm looking, the phrase I'm looking for, 15 to one. Um, and then we do have uh, experiential learning in our Atlanta laboratory, which uh, is a lot more of those internships and different things like that. Um, sorry, I'm talking a bit fast, but trying to get every as much as I can into you guys uh, as possible. Um, we do have eight different on-campus housing options. We have 100 plus student organizations on our campus. We have 16 division three athletic teams. So if you are looking to potentially play a sport here at Oglethorpe, um, you know, that could potentially be a good fit. I know I talked a little bit about the close proximity here in Atlanta. Um, other things just about our student body itself, um, you know, like I said, 1,500, 51% uh, of our students identify as people of color. Um, so just so you get a better idea, and 24% of our students are also student athletes. So if you're wanting to play a sport, you would fit right in here. Um, 
a little bit about what students are doing after Oglethorpe. 93% of our Oglethorpe graduates obtain a full-time position or become enrolled in grad school within one year of graduation. Here's some examples of who's headquartered here uh, in Atlanta, Coca-Cola, uh, Emory Healthcare, Alliance Theater, Delta. I know no one's heard of the CDC uh, recently at all, um, uh, but they're, they're headquartered here as well. And then we actually have the most college, the most graduates from any college working at Porsche, um, which is very random for a school 1500, but um, just goes to show um, here in Atlanta what putting Oglethorpe on your resume does for you. Um, just a little bit more about uh, financials and things like that. So 90% of our students actually receive merit-based scholarships. Um, there's not a separate application process or anything like that. Um, as you can see, there's other things here that we offer. But one thing I want to talk about here at the bottom is our flagship 50 scholarship. Um, so that flagship 50 scholarship for students is a great opportunity because we are a private school here in Atlanta. Um, but, but we want to give students the opportunity of that private school at a public school price. And the way we do that is this flagship 50 scholarship for students who have a 3.8 weighted GPA or higher or again, I'm saying or. Uh, a 1400 on the SAT super score or a 30 ACT super score. You just have to hit one of those. You're able to come to Oglethorpe for the price of the in-state tuition from which state you're coming from. Um, so we calculate those uh, tuition and fees from whatever the, um, the flagship institution is, and then we would match that. Um, so that, that would be the tuition that you would pay here at Oglethorpe. We would give you scholarships to reach to that point. So um, it's really good opportunity to be able to to go out of state for that in-state public school price. Um, in terms of our application process, so we are a holistic process as well. We would just need to complete the application for admission and transcripts. Everything else is optional. Um, so we do, test scores are optional. You can complete an interview. Letters of recommendation, also optional. Um, but, you know, so it makes it easy. We are on the common application as well. Um, so I know that that helps everybody when you're trying to apply to a bunch of schools to try to figure out what the best fit is for you. Um, and, you know, you guys as students are, are, are trying the hardest to try to figure out where you see yourself best. Um, and only you can do that. So um, hopefully these presentations are definitely helping out in that. Um, in terms of our deadlines, um, August 1st through November 1st is our early action deadline. So that e November 1st is quickly coming up. Um, that may get dis extended to December 1st, um, but that's a non-binding application. And if you apply by that deadline, uh, the application is fees free. So that $50 application fee is waived and you could be considered for full tuition scholarships. You will be considered for full tuition scho scholarships as well. And if you are considered uh, to be compete for those, you can uh, we would actually fly you and a guest to come and compete for those scholarships, um, which is a good opportunity to come and see the campus, um, you know, on, on, and we'll fly you out, like I said. So we typically try to get decisions out within two weeks. So our regular decision after that is rolling. Uh, but regardless of when you apply, we try to get decision out within two weeks. Uh, and then you would be considered for all of our other merit-based scholarship, including flagship 50, um, if you applied after the deadline. Um, if you want to stay in touch, here's our information here. Um, but thank you guys so much for, for listening. And, you know, I'll be glad to help answer any questions that you guys have. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. All right. At this point, I'd like to invite everybody back on so we can hear from you one more time. <clears throat> All right. And as you're getting prepared, I'm going to throw out my first question for you. So what advice would you give someone going through this process either now or in the near future? And we'll jump back up to Seattle University to start. The advice I would give to, is to really get clear on what's at the top of your college wish list, so to speak. For some students, it comes down to financial aid affordability. So whoever's providing you with the most scholarships or financial aid. For other people, it's a specific academic. For some, it's really the values of the institution or what student life is like. So really decide what's at the top for you, and that will definitely help narrow down which college you ultimately do want to apply and enroll at, because um, there's tons of colleges out there and it can feel overwhelming. So it's a really good strategy to use to help yourself get a little bit clearer on where it is you'd like to go. Thank you. Whitman College, what is your advice? Yeah, you know, it would be to lean into the resources around you. Uh, this is a stressful time for most people. Um, and so I'd recommend that you utilize your, your peers, your family, the resources around you, and that includes, you know, college counselors, but it also includes 
admission officers such as all of us. I think we're all in this industry to not be gatekeepers to our, our institutions, but to really open doors for students. So when we say reach out to us, we're not just trying to make a sales pitch. We're honestly hoping to find uh, help you find the best institution that meets your needs. So, you know, just have those conversations with us, lean into your college counselors uh, and find those resources. Awesome, thank you. Gonzaga University? Yeah, great advice from both my colleagues there. Um, I would like to add that if it's at all possible, try to visit the schools that you're considering. Um, if you can't visit in person, try to visit virtually. Most of us, really all of us, probably have some kind of visit program that you can do online as well. Um, but take, you know, when you are able to go and visit the campuses, then you can kind of feel them out for yourself. And it does make a big difference to step on one campus versus another. And that's why you know there are so many different schools because there are different schools that are different fits for people. And so take it. Um, get a sense of the environment that you were in, look around at all the people there, think, you know, these are going to be your classmates if you decide to go. Do you like the community? Do they, um, you know, do you like the area that you're in? You can take stock of the weather, all of those kinds of things when you visit. So I highly recommend trying to do that. Again, if you can only do it virtually, that's still um, better than not doing it at all because you can also get a sense of, of a school that way. Awesome, thank you. University of Portland. I would say we've gotten some really great advice already, but I would say lean into figuring out what you don't like as much as what you do like about a school. I think that is so important. It's it's so fun to like fall in love with a place via seeing what you're seeing on the website or by visiting, but it's okay to walk away from a college representative uh, representative's presentation or to walk away from a college visit and be like, I don't think I felt it. I don't think I like it that feeling is going to give you an idea of what else to prioritize. So it's okay to have those feelings lean into that. And I think your college search will be um, a lot smoother and you'll find the best fit that way too. Wonderful, thank you. California Lutheran University? Yeah, I got that really great advice from everyone here so far. I think something I always like to tell students is don't look for friends in any school for you to And so you can see what the choice impact will be and board will be um, so they'll publish what is like the total expected cost of that with no financial aid, right? And so I'm a first gen student when I was going through the process, that would be the first question I always ask schools was how much do you cost? And depending on that number, like I keep looking or I stop looking. Um, but there is so much financial aid out there. And then you first apply for admission, you also apply for financial aid, and then you're really able to see how much that school is going to cost you. And so go through the entire process. Um, if you're looking at other state schools or private schools, the cost is going to be a little bit higher or maybe a lot higher than some of the public schools that you're looking at near home, but there is also more financial aid that we might be able to provide. So just go through the process and then, and then we'll, we'll all have those conversations with you. I don't think anyone wants anybody to end up in crazy amount of debt. So we'll have those conversations with that principal. Thank you. And Oglethorpe University, your advice. Yeah, some amazing advice so far. I'm, I'm just going to echo too that that other people have already said. Um, honestly, um, uh, Carrie gave great advice. That would be that was what I was going to say is that visiting um, schools because I was a first generation college student and I didn't visit a single school. So um, and and I went blindly. I ended up having a great time and it worked out well. Um, but it, it definitely might not. So you got to figure out what's going to be the best fit for you. And I wanted to also echo what Chris was saying too about um, or maybe it was Chris, but somebody was saying about how. Um, you know, you want it. You want to ask as many questions as you can. We're a great resource as as admissions people here, and and that means going back to us too. So if you hear something from another school that you heard, and you're like, oh, I wonder if that school does that too. Let me go back and talk to those schools, um, so that you can get all the information possible, rather than just going off of what you heard the first time. Absolutely awesome. That was all really great advice. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. So I think at this point we are going to wrap things up. Thank you so much to our presenters. Your information was great to hear. Um, and thank you to our participants for jumping in this evening. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick survey. We appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions. There is more this evening as well as Saturday the 22nd. You'll be able to find all the recordings for all the sessions at strivescan.com slash crystal ray. Thank you so much. Have a great evening.